How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. Anyway, this week I've been really, really busy making scribes and putting them together and getting them shipped out. So yesterday I shipped out the majority of the ones that have been ordered and this morning I had a couple more. So they're going out. Now the ones that, there are several people that have ordered uh, dovetail cutters with and scribe at the same time. So I'm just going to be shipping those together. This week we'll be doing uh, dovetail cutters. Uh, I got, a, I think, a 17 to make. So we're going to be all over that this week, and I hope by the end of the week uh, to be shipping them out. So, so if you want to get an order in, now's the time to do it. Uh, I do have scribes left over from the batch, of course. Uh, I did not get rid of all of them yet. So... If you want a scribe, now's the time. The, if I make another batch, it will be maybe later in the year. So I'm just going to let you know. I, unless, you know, if there's the demand for them, I will make another batch. But right now I have about 40 left, I think it is, from, the, from the, this batch. Uh, so if you want one, now it's time to get an order in for them. Uh, the next thing here, uh, I picked up a new piece of equipment, and that is, you know, the the like I said, the funds uh, I raise through donations with dovetail cutters and scribes are for the shop, so I can do videos <laughs> for you guys, and I was able to purchase a surface grinder. I've been wanting a surface grinder or a tool and cutter grinder. I was really looking for a tool and cutter grinder more than a surface grinder, but I would take either one if I found the right one. So my good friend, uh, Ray Goff, and I'm gonna, you know, Ray is gonna be now the honorary president of the YouTube com Machining Community Fan Club, I think. <laughs> Ray's, Ray's a great guy. <laughs> Uh, and uh, he's on Facebook all the time uh, with machining YouTube and and stuff and showing stuff he's been doing uh, little projects and stuff. But uh, Ray found uh, he well let me back up a second. So Ray was has a two million bridge art milling machines, and they're all in parts and pieces. And he's been reworking one for a couple years, and and he finally was able to. Uh, have it uh, worked over. It's really a worn out one and it needed to be ground, the ways need to be ground, scraped, and things like that. Uh, so he found a guy in uh, Redwood City, and his name is Jason. Now I don't remember, the, I don't have the name of the business or anything, and I wish I did. But he uh, is doing Ray's uh, milling machine for him. Well, Jason had some other pieces of equipment for sale. And he had two surface grinders, and a tool and cutter grinder actually. The tool and cutter grinder was an Italian one, started with a T, I can't remember the name. And he had a brown and sharp hydraulic uh, 6x18 surface grinder and a KO Lee 6x12 surface grinder. And they were very good deals. I could not turn it down. So for 300 bucks, I ended up with a KO Lee surface grinder. Uh, I'm not sure it was when it was built. It was, it was built in the U.S. It's a U.S. made one. And it's uh, maybe the 80s. It's in very good shape. It's got some gummy coolant on it that I'm working on cleaning up. And I'm going to swing around and show you that a little bit and such. So, you know, it, it's all because of the viewers and the support of viewers uh, that I'm able to do some of this stuff. Anyway, uh, get a scribe. People are liking them, I tell you. Proven design, 40 plus years. 1980, I figured out, is when I made the first one and de designed it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to swing around, show you the move around of the furniture, you might say, <laughs> and show you the grinder also. Um, what else? Uh, I also picked up some things on eBay, and I'll, I'll shoot some videos of that, and uh, let's see. I can show you, I'll show you one right now. While I'm sitting here. 
since I have nothing for the surface grinder, just nothing, I, this is an eBay find, and this is a Herman Schmidt uh, V04, I think it is, V04, Herman Schmidt, I don't know if you can see that, uh, you know, grinding vice. It's beautiful shape. I mean, very, it, and it's an excellent, absolutely excellent condition. And and except for right here on the top, somebody ground a small, oh, it's not quite, about an eighth of an inch wide, but it's only maybe 30 thousandths deep, little groove. Now, I don't know why somebody did that, but they did. But really, that's not going to affect this device that much. But it was an absolutely perfect condition. So, I was able to pick that up for, I felt, a decent price for a Herman Schmidt. And so I picked up a few other things, and I'll shoot some video on those and uh, show, show that. This is my new shirt, and uh, my daughter's getting pretty good at her embroidery machine, so she did a few test shirts for me, embroidered with logo, and I'm... He's going to try even doing the back side of a shirt, so we'll see how that all goes. Other than that, that's what I've been up to and uh, really busy. Uh, also, I got, oh, I, I'll throw some footage in of building the A-arm jig, or not building the, yeah, kind of building the jig. Anyway, for my son's truck, uh, he built a new jig to build new A-arms uh, with uh, Heim joints, uh, they're the ball joints rod end ball joints and I can show you a few pictures of that and they are all they're installed on the truck and operating just wonderfully so he was really happy with how those all turned out uh, I'll show you that so thanks a lot you guys uh, thanks for stopping in and we'll be getting the mach some machining um, so uh, when I get the dovetail cutters wrapped up uh, We'll be getting to machining projects I have and uh, VFD projects I have now. I have two, uh, the surface grinder and the closing. And I wanna, I'm going to just do all those and try to get them all wrapped up. That's about it. And uh, we'll be seeing you. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Please share the videos. Uh, please subscribe. Click a button somewhere. Subscribe. I don't know how to put the little buttons on the screen. So I... Just don't know how to do that. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> thanks a lot, you guys, and uh, see you soon. This is the setup I used to grind the grooving tool for the handle of the scribe. These are just four inch cutoff wheels for, uh, you know, an angle grinder. This one's a, this one is. About 64 thousandths thick. This one's 104 thousandths thick. This is a arbor I made to hold these things. And we'll just put it up here in three quarter collet. Now I took it to the bench grinder and ground a flat surface across the front of it about, I don't know, six or seven degrees, something like that, uh, clearance angle. And nothing on the top. This is the top. And you can see the four small points. One, two, three, four. And I just came in. Here's the graining wheel. Now, this is the thick one that's on here. But I just came in here with a thin one and ground between them and on the edges and, and defined where the points were going to be with the small one and their depth. Then I put the big one on and removed the extra material here, here, and uh, up here on the corner here because I needed some clearance here. So, pretty simple how I did it. And I used the table to space them, uh, the dial on the knee, as I cranked up and down the table to get the spacing. I used the DRO for the depth of about 60 or 70 thousandths. Worked out really well, very easy to do. And these uh, wheels actually spun quite true and they it made really nice 
little points and, and I cut all the way across but this is at a, the back here has a clearance angle so it only cuts so far down the new scribe makes a perfect tool for as a pointer that's just how it would go when you're uh, when it's on the lathe just like that this is a stare at surface gauge I've had several questions about how I did my grinding of the base here to fit a radius piece on the end for measuring squareness and that grinding method with the cutoff wheels how I did it I just came in there and made several passes of cutting in here this is hardened and cut in the cut net groove right this, this here is about 62 thousandths thick stainless piece of sheet metal and then I say after I put it in I just pound it in tight and then I ground that, sanded that to a nice radius it doesn't matter what the radius is just as long as it's curved and smooth went in there real nice and uh, worked out really well second fit up of the uh, second A-arm we just we just tacked welded that side in for now so you can see how that joint is fitting up and coming out really nice then we're going to be welding this all you can see that that end needs to be radiused and fitted yeah there's two bends in here not one I know it's Oh, that's actually two bends. There's two bends. Two in bends there. in there, really. Yeah. There's oh. one here, and there's, you know, oh, this, yeah. this one. There's one right there. All the bends are being made with the uh, JD squared bender. Anyway, that's uh, using the jig. Heim rod. Uh, Heim, Heim rod ends. Heim is a manufacturer of the rod ends. Yeah. yeah. The same kind of thing they used on airplanes and stuff. There's the other one. This one still needs some finish welding. And then this is the joint. And then that's the top ball joint and that goes where? Goes right in there. In the right. cup. And that's where we made the fixture piece uh, over there. This is a... This is the... This is fitted on that fixture piece I made uh, at an angle even. But, uh, you can see it's screwed on the other end. Yeah. Then this is the other end of it where we, we take the fixture off of one end and put it over here uh, for the opposite A-arm. Yeah, you have to remember these are mirror images. Left and right. Left and right, so. Okay. We lowered the uh, operating table here to get a better position on the old TIG welding. Because if any of you have TIG welded, you know it's all about position. You got the vise in there sideways. And it's coming out good. The arms are done. See if we can zoom in a little bit. Show you the ends. Yell at me for zooming in. What's that, Trap? Yell at me for zooming in. Yeah. All painted up. Bearings are all in. Oh, here. See how those are. That's the upper ends. You see, you can adjust them, so you got a lot of yeah. Came out really nice. Uh, put them in here real soon. There's the arm, just about finished, installed. Still got to tighten things up a bit. This is uh, the right side. This one's installed. 
Looks pretty good. Hopefully it works. Hopefully it works. <laughs> I want my last couple of handles for the second batch of the carbide scribes. You know, so I'm working on what I'm doing is finishing these up. The last part is turning this down, uh, radius the end, and the grooves. Now uh, this is a little different setup than I used on the first batch. I was able to pick up some uh, different tool holders on eBay and these work. They're knee tool holders but they work like a um, boring head. They're dovetail with a gib and, and an adjustment and so it makes it much easier to put in and adjust for the proper dimension on your workpiece. You can see that, how the, the adjustment is here, Allen wrench and loosen the lock and uh, move it in and out. Now this one's set at an angle because of clearance issues. This has sped up the operation uh, quite a bit by using these new tool holders. I have the grooving tool on the operator side uh, this time and a facing tool upside down on the off side. We'll just run through one here just to show you the quick operation. So I'm going to face it. That's just to really to get rid of the nub on there. Turn to diameter. Normally I go a little faster than this, but the tripod's very close here. This is turning to radius. It's kind of hard to see that. But makes a nice job on that. And I come in and do the groove. Comes out very nice. And it's pretty, it's, it's sped up the operation quite a bit. Doing a little handheld here. So there's a surface grinder. This is my roll around bench with the bandsaw and small bench grinder and a vise. And we have a new vise there that's going to be fixed up and installed somewhere, maybe on a welding table. And then the other bench is now over here. And there's my tool and cutter, glue grinder. I'm going to move that to this other end over over here. It's too awkward where it's at now. But this way I'll have a bench right here by the grinder. So there's the uh, K.O. Lee 6x12. Two horsepower. Towel sitting up there. Uh, two horsepower. But I've, I, mean, I really haven't cleaned up uh, wiped it down just a little tiny bit, but it's in very very good shape the paint a uh, little Eaten up here probably from coolant and such And I've taken the vi I've taken the uh, chuck off the magnetic chuck off electromagnetic chuck And you can see here. There's been some a uh, little bit of rusting, but you know, I can't it's stain. It's more of a staining I can't really feel it if you closed your eyes like Tom said uh, in this latest video, you, you don't feel that, but, so I'm not sure if I'm just going to polish that up uh, with some scotch Bright, and, and I don't know if I'll grind it or not. Uh, maybe I'll run an indicator on it and things like that. The uh, electromagnetic chuck is sitting right here, and I have it off, and we'll be getting it all cleaned up. I got it 6 by 12 it's a it's a walker LPB chuck go around the back a little bit and I mean it's three phase of course um, you got a little control there's it's only a terminal strip in that box electrical box 
this this box is the magnetic chuck control down here and then your on off spindle spindle switch is right there pretty simple and it has one shot lube system and you can see uh, it's all gummy I've scraped out most of the gunk and now I need to get in there something to hopefully dissolve this coolant it's soft and mushy right now so it's it's coming out real easy it's just got to get in there and clean it up I'm gonna pop the table off make sure uh, everything's clean underneath now I need to I need a new timing belt uh, for it that is a shot it's broken but, but everything moves uh, quite freely uh, and it looks the ways look great I've looked, inspected them so we'll hopefully we'll lift that off and get this all cleaned up I need an arbor uh, for a wheel I need a wheel arbor to go on the spindle and I need grinding wheels it can take uh, eight inch there up to eight inch grinding wheels that's what it looks like they were mostly running on here but they had an eight and probably a seven and a six actually because of the grunt because they've scraped right here on the cover so you can tell the size there but eight inch max handles need a little cleaning they're a little rusted up but I'll, I buffed this one a little tiny bit already and I'll, bu I'll buff them up but uh, other than that all the reading dials are on, in good shape very very clean everything all the controls work really well very smooth so we'll we'll get the table off get things cleaned and lubed and new timing belt going on it Uh, this is going to be a pretty good setup. I'll probably build another shower curtain booth around it to contain the grinding dust and uh, protect all the benches a little bit too that way. So this is the grinder from the other side and I've nice flat back so I put my little pedestal six inch uh, grinder right here. Well it's really a wire wheel and a scotch bright wheel on it. And I slid the legs underneath the bench for the press, which works good. I didn't have to move the drill press, which was really nice. And all the rest is uh, pretty much the same. Doing some tack welds. Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> 